Hello, everybody, and welcome to Monday. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. Before we get into the lesson today, I want to let you know that you will have a progress check on Wednesday. It's going to be linear functions progress check number two, and the details of that are contained in your Canvas posting. So what we're going to start learning about today is what we call the average rate of change, because the only thing constant in life is change. And of course, functions are for the sole purpose of modeling and predicting change. So if we look here, we've already learned about the linear function and how the linear function has a constant rate of change. And so what that means is as you look at the graph of this linear function, the rate of change will be the same between any two points on this graph. And in order to find the rate of change, we use our slope formula, which is m equals y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And just by way of illustration of this again, if we look at this example, this is what we already know how to do, is find that constant rate of change between two points on a linear function. So for this particular linear function, my constant rate of change is a negative 5 over 2 or negative 5 halves. And that should make perfect sense because this is a decreasing line from left to right, meaning it is a negative sloping line. So the next thing that we want to look at is how can we find a rate of change for something that looks like this, which is not a line, but a curve. And that's where we start using what we call an average rate of change. So what you're looking at here is an exponential function. As you see, it does not make a line. It makes a curve. It's nonlinear. You'll learn more about these uh, in January when we get back from the Christmas break. But because it is a curve, the rate of change is not going to be the same between any two points. So the best we can do is get an average rate of change between two points. So the way that we're going to find this average rate of change between two points is we're going to do what we call draw a secant line and then find the slope of the secant line. So basically, here's what a secant line looks like. It is simply a line drawn through both of these points. All right? That's basically what a secant line looks like. And a secant line, like any other line, is going to have... A slope. So the slope of this particular secant line is going to be the average rate of change between these two points. So if we go back over here to our canvas and look at the uh, these two points here, to find an average rate of change, we're going to just do the same thing and use the slope formula. So for this particular linear, or excuse me, exponential function, my average rate of change between these two points, 1, 6, and 354, is 24. So if I were to choose two different points on this same curve, I'm going to get a different rate of change because I'm going to have a different secant line with a different slope. But there again, it's going to be the average rate of change between those two points. And again, that's just the best we can do when we're dealing with curves versus dealing with linear functions and lines. So if we look here at our next example, we can find the average rate of change for something that looks like this, which is a quadratic function. And it as well is nonlinear because it does not make a line. It makes a curve. Okay, so same thing. I've got two points identified that I'm trying to find the average rate of change in between. So I simply will draw that secant line between both points. And now I'm going to find the slope of that secant line. 
So what I will do then is come back over here to my board. And here's my points over here. So I'm simply going to write my slope formula. Okay, so what I'm going to do before I go any further, since I have two negatives that make a positive on both of these, is I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. So that's going to become 2 plus 2 over negative 1 plus 3. So here, my average rate of change between these two points is going to be 4 over 2, or simply 2. So if I were to go back to this graph, I would see that my average rate of change from here to here is 2, and it's a positive 2 because here over this interval, my curve is actually increasing. Okay, so again, if I were to choose two different points on this curve, if I were to choose negative 2, negative 1, and negative 1, 2, I would come up again with a different rate of change. And the reason I would is because all we can do with the curve is average the rate of change between two given points that we call an interval. Okay, so if I go to this next example here, here is the growth of a child from adult from boyhood to adulthood. And as you can see, his growth did not grow constantly, but his height changed over the different years of his life. So if I were going to use average rate of change, I could only pick two ages or two points on this curve and find an average between those two ages. So we have our two points identified here. I'm going to present it just so you can see it better at home. But we have here our two points of 13, age 13 and being 57 inches tall and age 18 and being 76 inches tall. So if I wanted to find the average rate of of change or his average rate of growth between ages 13 and 18, again, I would have my secant line between the two points and I would simply find the slope of that secant line. So 76 minus 57 equals 19. And then 18 minus 13 is 5. So to make this have some more meaning, I'm going to change this into a decimal, which comes out to 3.8. So I can then look back here at my example, and I can conclude that between age 13 and age 18, his average growth rate was 3.8 inches per year. He had an average of 3.8 inches per year. Okay? So in summary, what we looked at is if the graph of a function is not a straight line, meaning it's a curve, such as an exponential function or a quadratic function, the average rate of change between any two points is the slope of the line containing the two points called the secant line. Okay? So that's how we find an average rate of change. So you might be sitting out there and saying, well, this isn't anything different than we've been doing. And for the most part, you're correct, but we're just applying it differently. And tomorrow we're going to add more to it. So if this is an easy day of math, enjoy your easy day of math. Okay, so what you're going to do today for your assignment is you're given three different graphs here, and they're all nonlinear. So you're going to find the average rate of change between the intervals that are given. So you're going to have to, like for the first one, it says the average rate of change between one and six minutes. You would come in here and get your ordered pair of 120 and then come here and get your ordered pair of 645, 
and then find the rate of change between those two points, and that's going to be your average rate of change. Then you'll do the same thing for six to nine. And what you're gonna notice, like I already mentioned, is that it's just that an average. All your numbers are gonna be different because there is no constant rate of change in a curve. The best we can do is get the average rate of change between two points, okay? So that concludes everything I have to say today. Um, again, read your posting for information about your progress check. And tomorrow, we will add to what we already learned today about the average rate of change.